We're here in Istanbul at um, a conference that largely deals with Islam, but also with dialogue, yes. uh, Muslim-Jewish-Christian dialogue. And uh, I'm David Goa, friend of uh, Archbishop Lazar's. And I'm delighted that uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Professor Morton Nabinsky, is here. And we have a chance to speak with him a little bit about his latest book, which is just about to be published, uh, a book on uh, Christian Zionism. So, Professor Medvinsky, what's the origin of Christian Zionism as you've been exploring it in, in America? The origins may go back some centuries in terms of a buildup of certain aspects of theology, but uh, the major bit of background uh, goes back to uh, the middle to the latter part of the 19th century uh, with a person named Darby who was in Ireland and England and put together a group called the Brethren. They were his followers. And uh, he developed a theology of Christianity that's, um, that came to be called dispensationalism. And that really is the uh, major part still of the theology of Christian Zionism. Now, uh, actually, Darby did not have great success in expanding his group uh, in England and or in Ireland. Uh, but uh, that theology of dispensationalism was picked up by some um, a Protestant uh, uh, evangelical oriented seminaries in the United States, and Bible, uh, schools. Bible schools, well, Moody, Bible school. Moody Institute or Moody Bible School in Chicago was one of the major ones. And uh, those people uh, picked up and began to advocate and even expand this theology. So uh, Christian Zionism then did blossom and still is blossoming primarily in the United States. We had um, the Bible School movement, of course, reached into Canada as well with Prairie Bible Institute in Alberta, and then people like uh, Premier Eberhardt in Alberta for many years who had a Bible school in Calgary, and many other Bible schools across the West, largely the West of, the, of, of Canada, which was tied into this movement. So it's been very significant in Canada as well, and is not only capture some of the evangelical imagination, but it's gone beyond that at times. Right. So um, it is a kind of, uh, do I understand this correctly, that it is a kind of theology of the future of history, of our historical future, and lays out the unfolding of history and the place that Jews and Eretz Israel plays in that. Yes, well, it certainly does that. Um, the uh, major emphasis of this, of this uh, theology of Christian Zionism uh, is that uh, Jews have to have control of the Holy Land, all of the Holy Land, before the Second Coming. Now, some of the Christian Zionist um, leaders uh, argue that not only do Jews have to have control of the land, but uh, Jews have to be the only population in that land uh, before the second coming. Requires a kind of ethnic cleansing. That's right, it does. In other words, the uh, people who are there, uh, who are not Jews, uh, no longer should be there. Or at least Jews should be the majority. I've always found it curious that that even includes, of course, Christians who are Palestinians. Yes, that's right. And when I have asked um, some of the uh, Christian Zionist leaders, many of them, what about uh, the Palestinians who are Christians? Um, they have told me, well, we understand they're, they're Christians, but they should understand that they should not be there. And if they do not understand it, and if they remain there, then whatever happens is something they deserve because we have now told them what the true word is. 
You know, this plays into, there's, there's this other little sidebar to it. Palestinian Christians, Syrian Christians, many of the Christians in that part of the world are, of course, Orthodox or Maronite Catholic or Roman Catholic, right. but many of them are Orthodox. And of course, much of the evangelical world is only recently beginning to actually awaken to what I would call the Christian dimension of Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism. For a long time, those communities have also been, in fact, not considered really Christians, but a kind of pagan fo paganized form of Christianity. Well, that's true. That's but another little sidebar to it. That's right. That's right. But again, the view is uh, they need to understand this. If they don't understand this, as I said, they shouldn't view it. So, Christian Zionism, yes. what is it? Well, it's partially based upon what we just said, uh, that before the second coming, Jews have to have control of the Holy Land. But it's, of course, more than that. First of all, before the second coming also, uh, there will be, uh, the, uh, the, uh, will have the appearance in this world of the Antichrist, the person who is the pretender, uh, and uh, unfortunately, from the point of view of these Christian Zionists, most Christians, most people who call themselves Christians, uh, as well as the great majority of Jews, will follow the Antichrist. Therefore, and thereby, before uh, Jesus actually comes again, we will then have what they call the mother of all holocausts, namely Armageddon. And uh, the only people who will not be killed in this happening of Armageddon are the true believers, and they will be raptured up into the air. And by the way, uh, Christian Zionists uh, they have some different versions of how high uh, they will be raptured. Some say as high as seven miles up in the air, some less. But they'll all be killed. They'll all be killed. And in regard to Jews, uh, there will only be 144,000 Jews who uh, will not be killed. And they will not be killed because they will have become the true Jews or the real Jews and they will have followed Jesus in the correct way. The others will be killed. Mm -hmm. So the people who are raptured, they they aren't killed. They, they are not. They, they see what's going yes, on. Yes, in my book I'm going to say that they'll have a grandstand seat. Uh, each will have a grandstand seat uh, for and to Armageddon. Sounds like an extraordinary um, way to view it. <laughs> well, now, they believe they have God's word. Yeah. Now, Christian Zionism has had an enormous uh, set of implications for American politics. That's correct. Build that connection for us a bit. All right. Well, uh, actually, we have to go back. This is nine, this is 2010. And I would say we have to go back uh, anywhere between 10 to 15, uh, between 20 to 25 years, uh, uh, if we want to really view uh, the major.